So what about the dispersants you appear to have seen there and also the quantity of oil with the very top of BP, the executive surface today on the beaches. Jeffrey Kaufman was right there with him and he's here now. Jeffrey. That's right, Diane. Tony Hayward, the executive, the, the chief executive of BP, hasn't spoken for several weeks. Well, today he granted us exclusive access as he came here to see the oil up close. We met BP's top executive at the heliport in Houma, Louisiana, to join him for his first trip to the coast in a week. We're going to fight it subsea, on the surface, and on the shore. Sounds like you're, ref you're referring to, to Churchill, who I know you like to quote. I believe we're fighting a battle. The battle the enemy is clearly winning. From the sky, Hayward gazed down on thick brown oil that now scars the coast. Where ultimately in this disaster does the buck stop? Look, I'm focused on the response. You but you won't say, I mean, this was BP's well, you won't simply say to me, the buck stopped with me. Well, I think I said that all along. When you took over this company, one of the quotes that's often attributed to you is that you were going to focus on safety like a laser. What happened? I have, every day. For the last four years. But it's all gone uh, now. Well, it, it's clear that it, maybe it wasn't sufficient. I feel great sorrow for all of this. 30 minutes later, we arrived at Fouchon Beach, where oil is everywhere, and hazmat teams are struggling to stay ahead of it. That's your oil. I know. I'm gutted. I'm absolutely devastated. It's something I never wanted to see. It's something we fought really hard not to have happen. You have said that the Gulf is a very big ocean, it can handle this. Do you still feel that way? I said that in the context of about a week ago when at that time we were being successful in keeping the oil off the shore. Clearly uh, the defences of the shore have been breached. We're not far from Grand Isle and, and there are signs there saying, shame on you, BP. You, I understand, have had some death threats. And I spoke to somebody from Mobile, Alabama last night, and I, when he heard I was talking to you, he was just fuming, furious. And he said, ask him what it feels like to be the man ultimately responsible for destroying all of this. Well, I share his frustration and anger. And we can't change the past, but we can do everything in our power to make the, right, make the future better. And that's what we're going to do. And on two more points on the subject of dispersants, Tony Hayward told me they will continue to use Corexit. Despite the controversy, he's convinced uh, it is no more harmful than dish soap. And as for Secretary Salazar's comments, Diane, uh, that he may push BP aside, Tony Hayward just simply wouldn't rise to it. He said, we're part of a joint effort. We're sticking to it. He said dish soap again? He did. He says, it's, he says the science just isn't there. All right, Jeffrey. Well, as you know, anger is also reserved for Washington. We're going to head there now because on our drive here this morning, we saw a pickup truck with a hand-painted sign in the window that said simply BP plus the feds equals another Katrina. White House is feeling the heat and here's Jake Tapper. All right. From sending cabinet secretaries to the Gulf, to releasing a photograph of the president on the phone with Gulf Coast governors, to bringing Coast Guard Admiral Thad Allen to the daily briefing, the White House has had one message today. We are on the case. We are going to be tireless in working to do everything we can uh, to support the community and everybody whose livelihoods have been imperiled down in the region. We are going to stay on this and stay on BP till this gets done and it gets done the right way. But the White House is walking a fine and at times contradictory line. In recent days, even some of the president's strongest supporters have expressed concern at his lack of leadership in stopping the leak. One of the problems <laughs> I have with the administration is that they're not tough enough. They are risking everything by this go along with BP the strategy they have, and, and it, 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 it seemed like lackadaisical on this. The administration seemingly threatened to commandeer the operation at the bottom of the sea, to take control from BP. If we find that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, we'll uh, push them out of the way appropriately. But pushing BP out of the way is not the position of Admiral Allen, the man in charge of the federal well, response. I, I, would, I would say that's more of a metaphor. We'll... Allen today said it makes no sense to get rid of BP's expertise, equipment, and personnel. Other oil companies he's checked with would be taking the same steps. To push BP out of the way would raise a question to replace them with what? Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal isn't focused on who's in charge. He just wants help. We've been frustrated with a disjointed effort to date that has too often meant too little, too late for the oil hitting our coast. So what's taking so long? Admiral Allen says simply the government doesn't have everything it needs to deal with what he called an unprecedented anomalous crisis. Diane? All right, Jake.